few hours ago, New York Democratic Congressman Daniel Goldman in introduced a resolution to censure his fellow New Yorker, the fourth most powerful Republican in the House, Elise Stefanik, for comments like this one. Do you think that the people who stormed the Capitol should be held responsible to the full extent of the I law. have concerns about the treatment of January 6 hostages. Uh, I have concerns. We have a role in Congress of oversight over our treatments of prisoners. Hostages. She called them hostages, like the Israelis taken by Hamas. Hostages. Congressman Goldman says that Stefanik's support for convicted criminals who've been charged with offenses against the United States government is, quote, unacceptable for a member of Congress. And Congressman Goldman joins me now. Congressman, was the hostages comment that tipped you over? It, it was sort of the, the breaking point, I think. Her rhetoric and support for the January 6th erec, uh, insurrectionists and for generally the conspiracy theories peddled by the criminal defendant Donald Trump have been ratcheting up. And it's one thing for a rank and file member to be saying those things. It's altogether something different for the number four person in the leadership of the House to be uh, attacking our democracy, giving support to those who attacked this Capitol where I stand right now, um, and instead of doing the work of uh, the House and, and passing a budget and providing aid to our allies around the world uh, and addressing the issues such as the border and inflation and other things that the American people care about. But this is 2024, Chris. It's an election year, and we just cannot have members of Congress who are lining up, gearing up to subvert our democracy once again. And it just felt like we need to lay a marker down right now. I don't care what Donald Trump says, but sitting members of Congress have a, a separate oath to this body and to our Constitution. There's also an interesting context here reporting today uh, from our own NBC and CNBC of that uh, there's, there's discussions of Elise Stefanik as a possible running mate to Donald Trump. Um, the thought of Stefanik's possible choice for vice president, Trump nodded approvingly. She's a killer, he said, according to the person at the event. I suspect he doesn't mean that literally. Um, and, and, and then further, if you're Trump, you want someone who's loyal above all else, a Republican campaign operative said, and this is important, particularly because he sees Mike Pence as having made a fatal sin. Of course, Mike Pence's fatal sin was preserving the republic in the face of the most concerted effort to destroy it since the civil war, does it worry you that the way that your colleague Elise Stefanik appears to be auditioning for a role as vice president is to basically give aid and comfort to the very people who tried to overturn the Constitutional Republic? Well, not only that, Chris, she has refused to say that she will certify the election um, as uh, Mike Pence did. And that is clear, and it's been clear since 2019 when Elise Stefanik flipped a switch to go from a, you know, a relatively low-key, low-level, rational Republican from upstate New York to Trump's biggest defender in the impeachment hearings and then beyond. And it is clear that she is channeling Donald Trump in every way that she can, trying to audition to become the vice president. And given that she has no morals and no integrity because she completely flip-flopped in all of her policies and, and politics, for sure, uh, you can't trust her to do the right thing. And that's exactly what Donald Trump wants. He wants a sycophant. He wants a yes person who will do whatever he says. And it is clear that Elise Stefanik, in the run-up to the 2024 election, is trying to play that game. 